Hello guys and gals and welcome to a new tutorial. In this video we are going to be following on from the last tutorial and I'm going to show you how we can use our particle parameters inside of a blueprint as quite a few of you uh, were requesting that I show you how to do this. It's not actually too hard to set up uh, but there are obviously are some things that you need to have previously done which I've showed you in the previous video so please go and check out part one because I'm not going to be going over how to actually set up the parameters inside of the particle system we're just going to be hopping straight into the blueprint in this video so I'll leave a link in the description for that so that you can go and check that out first so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're just going to make sure that we have our particle system now you remember that when we left this in the previous video we had a particle system that we have a few different little parameters set up here. So we have our life, we have what well, we didn't set up our size, we have our velocity, and we have our color. Now accessing these in a blueprint is actually incredibly simple. What we're going to do is we're going to right click, blueprint class, actor, and we're just gonna call this BP underscore, I'm just gonna call it underscore particle. Now we'll drag one of these into our level, open it up, and once it's open, we'll add a component, and this will be a particle system. And we will drag in our p underscore parameter from the previous video and drop that into the template. And now you can see in our world, if we just get rid of the previous particle system, that our blueprint here has our particle in it. But it's just the defaults that we have it set up with. It's not actually using any of these parameters. Now there are two different ways that we can use the parameters. The first way is using the construct script. And what the construction script does is it allows us to set certain variables or attributes so that we can see them both in editor and in game. Anything that we then change inside of the event graph, which is once a play starts, will override anything that we put inside of the construction script. So you can think of a construction script as both the preview and start point of whatever we're going to be building. So what we'll do is we'll go into our construction script. And you can see here now we just have an execute pin for our construction script. And what we'll do is we'll drag out our particle system to get a reference to it. And then say we want to set our color, we will drag out from the particle system and we'll say set color parameter, like so. And then plug this into our particle, uh, into our construction script. When we press compile here, our particle isn't really going to do anything because we haven't given it our parameter name. So if we reopen our parameter and head to our initial color, we can see that our parameter name is just color. If we now change this to color and compile, our particle will now be black because the first color that we have by default here is black that you can see. So what we will do is we will right click the param with the little black box, which is our color selector and we will promote this to a variable and it will immediately make us a linear color variable and we're just going to call this color like so now if we press compile you can see we have a default value and we can set this default to anything we want say green and press compile and now you can see we're getting green into red because of the way our particles are working with color over life so we'll just turn that off for now so we can just see them as green so we can do this for our velocity also and anything else inside of our particle system. So for example, we have lifetime. So what we can do here is we can drag out from our particle system, set scalar, oops, scalar set particle parameter. Let's see which one do we want. We want a float parameter like so. Plug this in, we will call this life. Again, right click and promote this to a variable to create the correct kind of variable for us. And we'll call this lifetime, like so. Now, if our particle parameters were not called life, for example, we go in here and we change this to eggs, for example, then this will no longer have any effect over our particle. If we were to press compile, you can see that our lifetime is actually not changing to zero. In fact, we want to default this to something very, very small so that they can actually disappear should they want to, like so. You can see that they're not disappearing in 0.1 seconds because our particle parameter is no longer called life. It is now called eggs. Changes to eggs, 
and press compile, you can now see that they're dying much quicker. We're not getting that nice fade on the edge. They're dying almost immediately. So making sure that you name your parameters correctly is incredibly important to make sure that this can work. And similarly, you don't really want to try having all of your particle parameters have similar, similar names. By that, I mean, if we were to duplicate our emitter here, like so, we now have two different particle uh, emitters. We'll just rename these one and two, for example. If we go to our initial color, you can see that we have parameter name color over here on the left. And our second one is also parameter name color. Now, that's going to affect both of these. If we change the second parameter to color two, you'll now see that we have a green and a white because this one is now defaulted to something different and it has a different name, which means that our blueprint is no longer affecting it. If we were to change this to color two, press compile, it will now flip it over so we have white on the outside, green on the inside. Which is grand. Okay, so it means that we can set up each emitter differently based on what we need. So perhaps we want to set up another color here. And we'll just plug our particle system into the target, change our color to color two. And now we should have green and black overlaying on top of each other because our parameter here is black. And that's how we can do this for multiple different emitters in a single particle system. And again, we can right click this, promote this to a variable. We can call this color two. Or we could if I was typing color two. We'll press compile. Now, because these are occurring in the construct script, or what we can do to change these much more quickly, so C, we'll press G to get our game mode on and drag this over like so. What we can do here is we can expose our variables by ticking these little eyedroppers here, or on the details panel, we can click instance editable to turn that on or off. We'll press compile. And what this will mean is we can shoot, we can choose either of our blueprints or particle systems, and we can change their colors independently of one another, because we're doing this in the construct script, which means that we can see this in real time rather than having to press play. Now we can do this in the regular graph. So if we were to head over to our event graph, where we'd put most of our logic normally, we can say on begin play, we can change some stuff. So we'll drag out our particle system and we'll say particle system set color parameter, parameter name color. We'll plug this in. And now what we can do is we can give this its own variable, which we will call begin color. And normally there is no reason for you to set this up the way that I'm doing. We'll set this to like an RNG red, like so, compile, and we can even turn this onto eyedropper it. You wouldn't normally do it this way just because you don't really want both to occur. You want one or the other, but it's, you know, on a begin play, especially if you wanted this to happen when you push a button or if you wanted it, you know, after a specific piece of gameplay has occurred, then you can change the way that these look during gameplay, as well as having them default differently. So we'll say on begin play, we'll change this one to a blue and this guy on begin play, will change it to a yellow. Now, if we were to press simulate, we should get our colors. So we have our blue and although you can't really see it because there's a pink mixing in with the white there, uh, with the yellow, we are getting a white because of the mix, but that is going to be a yellow color. But you can see that we are changing them once we are playing. Yay! So there you go. That's how you can set the article parameters to change using a blueprint. It is very, very simple. Obviously, if you're going to be changing loads of them, this is going to get quite messy quite quickly, uh, in which case we can slap some of this into a function so that instead of having it all as a big spaghetti here, we'll just have a simple function that will run all of it for us. So it will be hidden away. Yay! So, there we go. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you very much to all of my patrons. I really, really appreciate the support. Uh, you can find links to the Patreon and my Discord and my Twitter in the description below. There we are. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.